Mr. Tiffany. Director Ray, let me start by highlighting national security concerns. Border Patrol recently arrested two Yemeni men at our border who were on the FBI terror watch list and no-fly list. It's my understanding one of your field offices interviewed them. What was gleaned from that interview or interviews? Um, I can't discuss the you know, specific ongoing investigation. Certainly we are concerned about, and our Joint Terrorism Task Forces, which I think is what you're driving at, have been lashed up with both CBP at the border uh, and to some extent working across the border with our, our LEGAD office in Mexico City uh, with a specific focus on special interest aliens. We're well, looking in particular at Yemenis, for example, who may have tried to come in. Um, but I'm not sure there's anything I can share about specific interviews in this kind of setting. Sir. People from countries of particular concern for terrorist activity, you mentioned a few of them, Yemen, uh, Pakistan, Somalia, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, and Iran, Iran have been coming. I witnessed it recently during my trip to the Darien Gap in Panama, and I would just say when you talked about, uh, your quote was, um, the source of the problem, which you cited the Northern Triangle, I would go a little further south than that, because when I went down to Panama, I saw it down there. And uh, the invasion coming into the United States has exploded as a direct result of President Biden's promise to all comers that he will grant them unobstructed catch and release into the United States. Should Americans have national security concerns with the exponential increase in the worldwide migration occurring as we speak across our southern border? Well, uh, certainly we, we uh, consider uh, security threats at the border to be uh, an opportunity for potential terrorist activity. I, I would not want to leave you with the impression, though, that as we're sitting here, that we're tracking any specific credible terrorist threats coming from um, recent uh, individuals crossing the border. Uh, that doesn't give me a lot of assurance when you have tens of thousands of people basically invading our country. The, the, the numbers are staggering. They're coming out every single day. That would not be reassuring to me if I heard that answer as an American. I want to go on to a second issue I'd like to cover, um, our two-tiered justice system. Uh, this is something I hear regularly back home. Time and again, Americans have witnessed justice being carried out in unequal ways. I'll give you a couple of examples. Secretary Hillary Clinton destroying evidence, no consequences. Hunter Biden allegedly lying on his firearms background investigation, no consequences. FBI attorney, former FBI attorney, you probably know, Kevin Kleinsmith, getting probation for lying in order to secure renewal applications to the FISA. Uh, and on top of that, we have the amorous couple, Page and Strzok, who I'm sure you know, that were actively trying to um, put their fingers on the scales in an election in 2016. None of these citizens had their homes raided, but they all have one thing in common. They are Democrats. Conversely, your agents have approached conservatives very differently. They've executed dramatic raids on the homes of Roger Stone, Paul Manafort, Rudy Giuliani, and were negligent in the investigation of General Flynn. These citizens all had one thing in common. They're Republicans. I'm leading to a question that happened here in Wisconsin. A man named Burnell Trammell was murdered in broad daylight in Milwaukee last year. His son, sin was he was a Trump supporter. Now earlier, when you heard some people listing examples of minorities who have been killed here in the United States, which is a terrible thing, they never mentioned Burnell Trammell, African-American man from Milwaukee, well known for going around his neighborhood wearing a Trump shirt showing a Trump sign. No one ever mentions him. It's my understanding his murderer is still at large and the local government has remained quiet on this matter, despite actively encouraging anti-Trump rhetoric and protests all last year. A request was made to launch a federal probe into Mr. Trammell's murder, as it seems to have been politically motivated. Director Ray, Ray have you answered that request and investigated that politically motivated hate crime of Burnell Trammell? I'm not sure that I can address that in this setting. Uh, certainly, I'm happy to follow up with our Milwaukee office to see 
what the status of that particular issue is. I don't know the circumstances well enough to be able to speak to it. Um, I can assure you that we have one standard, uh, and I've been crystal clear uh, with our folks about that, uh, and that's the way it's going to be as long as I'm FBI director. I hope his time has expired, Ms. Demings. Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Christopher Ray was flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is, uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there, and uh, I think he showed it, especially in this his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is push to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been, you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues. And ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C., I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm -hmm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. There were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my 
my former office, you know, the Department of Justice. I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other capital she's ever been in is a state capital that's open 24 seven. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is, it's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.